So this about 5G uh, open run. Okay, so this is an implementation of 5G using an open run system. So this is just a quick uh, discussion as well so that we can focus more on the question and answer. Okay, so the topic I, pre I prepared for you is, uh, yeah, we'll start with the foundation of wireless telecommunications. Although I know some of you are already extremely familiar with the wireless telecommunication system, but uh, for the benefit of other participants, especially those uh, are new in our uh, discussions, so we'll still tackle this uh, topic. And then the cellular frequencies, uh, next is to what is radio access network, the evolution of mobile network communications, what is 5G and the 5G use cases that uh, you can think of uh, implementing here in the Philippines once you uh, get familiarized on the capabilities of 5G. Uh, the 5G footprint, uh, network slicing, evolution of RAN, uh, open RAN, although it, it looks like so many, you know, but it, it would be a quick uh, discussion only. And open RAN in Asia and uh, who is Asia Open Run Academy, but uh, Bianca already discussed this one. Okay, so uh, our topic will discuss on the foundation of this uh, wireless telecommunication system. So in the Philippines, the foundation of our leap uh, into the enhanced connectivity and the digital future lies within this wireless telecommunication system. And this is also crucial in the backbone and uh, of our ability to communicate and uh, serve and connect to the uh, across the archipelago and within the wider world. So the wireless telecommunication system is composed of uh, just as simple as one, two, three. So one is the user terminals. So these are your uh, mobile phones, okay, tablets, Android, or even a laptop with the SIM card connected to a radio access network. So also known as cell sites. So the radio access network is the critical middleman that bridges our devices with the network. And this uh, radio access network is um, connecting the user terminals using the air interface or via frequency. Now the radio access network also is connected to the core network. This, so the core network is the nerve center that processes and manages and routes the vast amount of data that we generate and consume. So the uh, radio access network and the core network is connected uh, to each other by the what we so call the back hole. So it could be a microwave, a fiber optic, or via satellite. Okay, so always remember the wireless telecommunication system as easy as one, two, and three. Okay, so user terminals, radio access network, and the core network. Now let's move on to the inter air interface where the invisible lines are connecting this uh, user terminal and the radio access network. So we have the following frequencies now. So these frequencies are the typical frequencies in the lower bands and in the mid bands of our cellular system. So we are using the 450, the 700 megahertz, the 850 megahertz, and the 900 megahertz. So when we talk about frequency, uh, just think of uh, tuning in a, a certain frequency when you want to listen into an FM station. The FM uh, frequencies are, are lower than these frequencies. For example, one of the famous uh, frequency uh, uh, FM station is the 90.7. So 90.7 love radio, but in this case, it's 90.7 megahertz. Okay, not the love radio. Love radio is a, is a station uh, station name. So just imagine the, the difference in the frequency of 450 and 90.7. So... It's very far from our. We also have the 1800 megahertz, the 1900, the 2000, the 21, the 23, the 25, up to the 35 in the um, um, in the mid band. So you can see that there are red uh, boxes and the blue boxes. So the red boxes are uh, equating to uh, frequency division duplex. So meaning the uplink and the downlink uh, channels are separated uh, by frequencies. While the blue ones are 
we what we so called CDD or the time division duplex. So next is uh let's focus now on what is radio access network. So radio access network, this is the part of the system what that gives us the mobile coverage. So this is the main reason why you have signal in your phone. So the 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 infrastructures that give you that gives you the mobile coverage is what we call the radio access network. So this is the nearest, this is the infrastructure that is nearest to the subscribers. And then you can see it all around you. And these are widely distributed to give us a seamless coverage and mobility. Okay. So there are different stru run structures. So we have this SST, the self-support tower that can be deployed uh, using structural configurations. So each designed to meet a specific network requirements, okay, performance goals and deployment scenarios. So these are the different types of uh, radio access network. Now, so you can see a self-support tower, rooftop sites, a guide tower, monopole, cell site on wheels, camouflage sites, wall mounts, and even a network in a box. So the radio access network or the mobile communications has evolved. So we start from 1G, okay, so the first generation um, that started in 1980s where we witnessed the birth of mobile technology. Then came the 2G in the 1990s, introducing the digital system such as the GSM. And then for 3G, um, it brought us the internet to our phones. So this is the first time that we have the capacity to do a do uh, internet connection using our uh, mobile phones. And then uh, 4G arrived in ar around 2010 with uh, LTE, a further enhanced mobile broadband offering speeds that uh, enable high definition video uh, and then streaming and then real time gaming and other advanced applications. And now we are in the, at the, we stand at the brink of a uh, new era with 5G, which was introduced in around 2020. So you can see that the 5G will have a diverse opportunities that will offer not only in the subscribers, but also for engineers and uh, aspiring uh, telecom um, professionals. So now let's focus more on 5G. So when we, uh, let's demystify what is 5G and understand its groundbreaking impact in the Philippines. And uh, as, as you understand the technology, as you get familiar with, with the technology later on in my slides, um, I will ask you some use cases that you might think that it's applicable for the Philippines. Okay, so that's to, that's to trigger the creativity uh, inside of you. Okay, so 5G is a uh, is fifth generation of a mobile communications that introduces a new era of connectivity. So through its uh, new radio technology or NR. So when we talk about NR, we are talking about 5G and NR means new radio. It, it's the same as LTE. When we talk about LTE, it's equivalent to 4G. Or LTE means long-term evolution. But in when it comes to 5G, it is called NR or new radio. Okay. So it is designed around three pivotal uh, classes of use cases. So we have the enhanced mobile broadband, okay, massive machine type communications, and ultra reliable and low latency communications or URLLC. So when we talk about EMBB, so imagine streaming uh, ultra high definition videos or experiencing virtual reality tours of the Philippines, no? or different uh, tourist spots in the Philippines. So EMBB makes uh, this possible with high data and uh, a significant traffic volumes. Next is the MMTC or the Massive Machine Type Communications. This supports a massive number of uh, devices simultaneously. So with low cost and energy consumption. Okay, so as much as uh, 1 million devices per square kilometer. And then we have the ultra reliable and low latency communications or the URLLC. So it brings very low latency and high reliability. Okay, so this is uh, these are essential for critical applications such as, uh, for example, remote surgery, autonomous vehicles, and disaster response where every millisecond uh, counts. So this is a typical uh, architecture of a 5G, which is a, uh, which is a standalone uh, mode where you have a dedicated core network 
to your um, 5G uh, next generation node. So what are the 5G use cases? No? So in this slide, you will see the general applications of the following use cases from the EMBB, MMTC, and URLLC. And some of those applications are quite uh, intersecting to each other. Now, when we talk about use cases, so can you think of uh, use cases for the Philippines? Where can we implement 5G? What are, what are the different applications that we can implement here in the Philippines? Okay, so I'll be giving you an example which we are currently uh, experiencing, no? enhanced mobile broadband. So if you are if you are using 5G right now in your phone, you are experiencing a high throughput uh, experience, no? So mabilis yung throughput natin, as much as 200 or 300 or even 500 Mbps. Okay, what else? Philippines uh, is uh, uh, is uh, famous, no? Famous for uh, tourism. So we have a lot of uh, tourist spots here in the Philippines. So we can think of smart tourism okay so if you are a student right student or a developer so there is uh, a possibility no, for developing a smart tourism especially uh the release you know, no, see apple vision pro but apple vision pro is not yet connected to cellular it's only wi-fi and bluetooth but maybe on the on the next upgrades for other form factor might be applicable for 5g connections no? so smart tourism is also uh, one of these uh, application. So let's see, no? Yeah. So meron pa tayo dito disaster response management. So nabanggit natin ito kanina, no? Ni, yeah, ni Alexis, no? Yeah. So utilizing the real-time data and connectivity for efficient disaster response. What else? So dahil ang Pilipinas ay isang agriculture, no? So we're <laughs> tama-tama. Smart agriculture. So we are implement we could implement IoT solutions for precision farming, including soil and crop uh, monitoring, automated irrigation, um, and pest management. No, ano pa to increase agricultural productivity and sustainability. Uh, we can also use um, environmental monitoring. Okay, so deploying different sensors uh, and drones for real time monitoring of patulad ng mga marine animals natin ano and terrestrial ecosystems yan para ma-conserve natin and then uh, uh yung mga efforts and sustainable natural resource management uh, nabanggit din kanina yung e-health no very good yan e-health or uh, healthcare and telemedicine yan so enhancing healthcare delivery through remote consultations and uh, mind you no this is one of the uh, important din no lalo na sa mga GDAS areas natin yung mga geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas. So imagine there are still areas in the Philippines that uh, cannot be reached by internet dahil sa poor connectivity. So if we could uh, connect them, even LTE, uh, telemedicine is uh, one of the best ways no, to to reach out to these uh, areas in the Philippines no, para magkaroon tayo ng remote consultations, patient monitoring lalo na sa mga buntis no and access to specialist uh, services imagine no um, for example i came from from one island here in the philippines uh, last week no galing kami ng bohol and then uh, na nalaman namin no sa mga areas pala ng bohol kapag ka mayroong sakit or mayroong nagpapa-check up yung isang uh, isang tao na located sa gidas area gidas is geographically isolated and disadvantaged area Nahirapan sila, no? Kasi minsan, ang, ang paggamot ng panila is sa Cebu. So, using the telemedicine, what 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 uh, the doctors are proposing there, the doctors to the barrio, they can uh, do the referral system. So, at least meron lang connection. So, may connection yung rural health center na punta sa Cebu, and then they can do a remote consultation. So, para bago pumunta yung pasyente sa Cebu, nakaredy na, no? Hindi na sila mag-uubos ng, alam mo yan, mag-uubos ng pera. Uh, magbabenta ng kalabaw para pamasahe sa Cebu and then mag-iikot-ikot sa Cebu to find the best doctors. But but if we could implement a telemedicine uh, here in the Philippines, um, we could make the collaboration and uh, uh, yung coordination between these two uh, health hubs. No? Okay? Ayan, ano pa? Of course, no? Education and remote learning. Nabanggit na rin to kanina, no? Um... 
Ayan, no? Sa education. So, facilitating e-learning platforms and virtual classrooms to provide quality education resources. Now, if you will go to the Facebook page of uh, DOST ASTI, so there is a special uh, team there. Ang tawag nila is uh, Project Rain. No? Si, si Project Rain is there building this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, network, uh, community networks no? that, pro that is providing this kind of uh, education and remote learning. So, nandun na nakakash dun sa kanilang equipment para mapanood ng mga bata yung mga lectures. Yan. And then they can also record yung, for example, uh, uh, National Museum, ano makikita sa National Museum. So, yung mga isolated places sa Pilipinas. So, hindi na nila kailangan pumunta sa ano. No? So, at least nakita nila no? virtually yung National Museum natin dito sa NCR. Okay? So, that is part of the education and remote learning. What else? Um, meron tayong mga renewable energy, so smart grids and renewable energy management. Okay, so optimizing energy distribution and consumption through smart grids, supporting yung Philippines commitment to renewable energy and energy independence. Yeah, maganda nga na rin yan. Ano? Um, particularly kung nasa urban area or nasa munisipyo, municipality, uh, public safety and security. So yung mga... Um, advanced surveillance systems natin like yung mga CCTVs na yan um, emergency communication networks and real-time public uh, safety alerts to enhance security and safety for residents and visitors no? yeah. and uh, digital services no? for government yeah. so malaking ano rin yan, malaking uh, impact din yan so we can streamline the government services through these online platforms, improving efficiency, transparency, and accessibility no, of public services. Dahil ang Pilipinas din ay uh, pulo-pulo at uh, napapaligiran ng tubig, of course, yung maritime connectivity and safety. right? Uh, enhancing maritime communications for navigation, okay, safety and coordination of search and rescue operations, that is also crucial no, for an island nation like the Philippines. And, yeah, nabanggit din ito kanina, no, yung transportation. So, implementing intelligent transportation systems for traffic management, public transport enhancement, and infrastructure monitoring. So, these are the use cases no, that can demonstrate the transformative potential of 5G if we implement it here in the Philippines. And sometimes itong mga ideas na yun uh, could maybe come from one of the participants here in our webinar or in, in one of the participants in the Facebook, on, on our Facebook page. No? So it would give you an opportunity no, to, to, to be one of the contributors. Yeah. So probably you could think another use case applicable for the Philippines that could benefit uh, na maisasama natin, no? lalo na yung mga nasa... Uh, malala yung lugar sa Pilipinas. Okay? Okay. So, these are the uh, opportunities that could drive uh, economic growth uh, and enhance public services and improving the quality of life for the uh, residents and visitors uh, of the Philippines. Okay? So, nakita natin kanina, uh, ito, luma na ito, eh, no? uh, 2020 pa ito, no? but the footprint of 5G uh, almost 70 countries around the world last uh, 2022 of January, two years na to, no? But you can see that the Philippines is one of those uh, countries that are involved in deployment of 5G. So if you're an engineer or aspiring telecom engineer, so this is a good opportunity for you to look forward to. No? Kasi makita mo na yung ginagawa, yung ginagawa nating 5G dito sa Pilipinas is not only applicable here sa Pilipinas, uh, the same 5G technology that we are studying here or deploying here, the same 5G technology that America, Japan, um, Latin America, or Europe, Australia, or even India, or uh, Malaysia, Indonesia are deploying. Now, so there's a lot of opportunities opening uh, for you. Okay? Okay, so... Now let's move on to network slicing. So this is one of the features, okay? One of the features of a 5G technology. So to understand this concept, so let's imagine a fruit such as apple and orange being sliced into different pieces. 
So each slice of the fruit can represent a separate dedicated network within the broader 5G network. No? So catering to specific needs and requirements. So it provides a suitable end-to-end -end QoS with optimal resource sharing. So when we say end-to-end -end QoS, just imagine you are stuck in in traffic, in a traffic, sa EDSA, okay? So EDSA is something like a, a frequency or spectrum resource. So kaninang umaga, pinag-usapan natin ito sa 5G rin discussion. Um, think of the frequency as the road, no? katulad ng EDSA. So ginagamit natin yan, so we are connecting from one uh, cell site to another cell site using that road no? para mag makapag-transmit tayo ng data. So kapag ka merong nagkahit na traffic yan, no? and then meron dumating na ambulansya, okay, ambulansya, police, or anything na emergency, uh, typical ang ginagawa natin, we give way, right? We give way. Because yung ambulansya has a different QoS, quality of service. Mas mataas yung QoS niya. So sa network sizing, ganun din. Ano? So it depends on the type of service that you are utilizing or using in the network. So typical, meron tayong uh, tatlong network slices. No? But it could uh, spread no? depending sa pangangailangan ng operator. So the three types of network slice, ah, syempre yung tatlong use cases. The mobile broadband, low latency, and massive IoT. And of course, it could be customized by the operator okay, the, or the mobile network operator. So each network slice has the segment of the run, for example, you could you could divide your subscribers from the low frequency, high frequency, or the mid frequency. So that's how we segment the run. There could be a segmentation in the core network. Okay, so may ano siyang sarili sariling ano ano um, um, orchestration management. But it is a transport. Okay, may ano siyang different uh, QoS, and then may ano siyang life uh, suitable life cycle management. Okay. Okay. Now, puntahan natin si evolution ng radio access network. Okay, so, typical, nung nag deploy tayo ng LTE, ng 2G, 3G LTE, we are using the traditional network or the what we so-called the distributed RAN. Okay, so when we talk about traditional network or distributed RAN, mapapansin nyo yung ating baseband unit at yung radio unit are located in the cell site premises. Nandun lagi sa cell site dyan. So, kapag binili mo yung isang radio, uh, lock ka na doon. No? Gamitin mo o hindi, nandun na yun. Okay? Kung, kung hindi mo siya magamit dahil konti yung mga subscribers doon, nandun na yung equipment mo. Okay? So, um, yun yung tatawang nating traditional network. And then, nag-evolve yan sa centralized uh, network. No? So, in this case, uh, yung baseband natin are pulled into one uh, location we call the central office. Pero mas kilala to sa, ano, no, sa tawag na baseband hotel. Yan. Nung nalaman namin yan, sabi namin, buti pa ang baseband in a hotel. No? Okay. Ayan. So, baseband hotel. Okay. So, yung mga radio unit ang naiwan sa ating uh, uh, base, uh, sa ating cell site premises. And then, they are using the, what we so call the dark fiber. Yung mga fibers na nakalatag na, pero hindi naman ganyan ginagamit. So, Basically, naka-centralize yung ating processing no? na yung mga baseband pool. And then later on, as we progress no? uh, dun sa deployment ng radio access network, we go to the virtualized uh, network. Yan. Where the network functions that were traditionally performed ng mga dedicated hardware ay ginawa na natin software-defined. Okay? Kaya sa Asia Open na Academy, makita nyo, meron tayong mga courses na software defined networking, network function virtualization and open flow. Okay, so dito na papasok 'yan. Kasi pagdating niyan, it's a combination of virtualized and open RAN system. Okay? So pumasok na tayo dito sa virtualization, okay? So we are using a COTS or commercial off the shelf na server and then we just virtualize yung functionality ng ating mga uh, RAN uh, functionalities no. Ano yung sabihin nun? No? So, for, for a beginner, uh, pwede mong isipin na ganito dati. No? Dati, uh, when you want to listen to an FM radio, ano gagawin natin? No? So, we need to buy an FM radio. So, when we buy an FM radio, nandun na yun sa ano? Nandun na yun, bibili ka ng radio, no? tapos may antena yun, and then you will tune in. No? Makikinig ka. So, you need to buy the radio. 
and then yung component nandun na. But in this era, you can listen to the FM radio by just downloading the app. Okay, using your phone. So, naging digital yung yung functionality ng radio eh, using the application. And then, kung ayaw mo nang makinig ng FM radio, ayaw mo nang gumamit ng FM radio, gusto mo nang mag-Spotify or mag-Apple uh, Music, you just delete the app. no? So, ganun din no? pag sa virtualized network. So, if you don't need that function or the capacity or the functionality, you just delete it. Or if you want additional capacity or functionality, you create it. So, depends on need. No? So, for example, nagka-traffic sa EDSA, and then you want more resources to be allocated in the in EDSA, so you configure it based on the requirement. And then, kapag ka natapos na yung rush hour, you just delete and then allocate the resources to other areas. Okay, so, that is uh, the ease of uh, virtualized uh, network. And then, uh, we stand now sa brink ng open run. Okay? So, open RAN uh, promises to revolutionize yung RAN architectures. So, ang ginawa natin yan, we are decoupling, pinaghihiwalay natin, the hardware and the software components. So, we are fostering the ecosystems with the operators that can mix and match. So, ngayon kasi, kapag ka ginamit mo tong, itong mga tong, so, usually, you are buying the same software and uh, hardware equipment sa isang vendor lang. But with the open run, so the promise is uh, we can mix and match, okay? Because the open run uses the uh, uh, open source hardware, open source software, and open interface. Nabanggit ka na ni Ken, no? Yung open interface. If you have an open interface, actually, you can uh, mix and match yung mga different RUs to their uh, baseband unit, okay? So, ganun lang, ano, no? This openness not only drives down potentially the cost, no? but also accelerate yung mga innovation, enabling more agile and responsive networks. Kasi for example, meron kang mas magandang nakitang specification from other vendor and then you want it to be used in your in your system, so you can easily tap that vendor. Not unlike that is mga traditional, centralized, and virtualized, you need to stick to one vendor no? to implement those kind of uh, uh, implementation. So, itong mga ito, so you can implement it using, uh, for example, no, uh, 2G, uh, 3G, uh, LTE, and 5G. Huwag so, mo natin pag-usapan yung 2G and 3G. No? So, LTE and 5G. So, you can deploy traditional run using LTE, centralized LTE, virtualized LTE, and open run LTE. So, it, it only depends on how you implement the technology. So, this is the evolution of the radio access network. That's why open run, uh, most of the experts are not saying this is a new technology. This is just a new movement of implementing a radio access network. So this is the same LTE technology that we are using. No? Ang nangyari lang is nagkaiba tayo ng deployment approach. Instead of using the proprietary hardware, software interfaces, we are now using an open hardware, open software, and open interfaces. But the technology itself is the same. So it is still uh, following the 3GPP standards for LTE and the likes of 5G. Okay? Ayan. So this is the open run. Okay, so when you talk about open run, so open means open radio access network. So nabanggit natin kanina, this is an industry movement that develops disaggregated and interoperable radio access network solutions that leverage mga general purpose processors, hardware, uh, software defined networks, and open interfaces based on industry standards. So, ano ba yung mga industry standards? No? 3GPP. So, kapag ka, um, um, nagawa na ng 3GPP standard, no need to reinvent the wheel. So, ang gagawin natin is kapag ka meron tayo mga bagong interfaces, katulad ng pinakita na kanina ni Ken dun sa kanyang dun sa architecture ng open run so there are new interfaces or components that was introduced by uh, open run system no so merong panibagong standard na gagawa niyan so ang standard na gagawa niyan is tinatawag natin si Oran Alliance okay yung mga specifications so sino si Oran Alliance no so si Oran Alliance is um a group of telecom companies that aim to improve the performance and openness of their networks. Yan. So, pinagsama nga na yan, si CRAN at si Exxon. 
and they call for more intelligence in the network through information collection of these virtualized network elements. So if you want to learn more about Oran Alliance, and yung website nila. So www.o-ran.org. Kung talaga kayo dyan, makikita nyo yung iba't ibang applications, okay, different uh, um, plug fest, no, mga testings, specifications about Open Run. Sino-sino mga vendors na involved, sino-sino mga potential na pwede nyo pag-aralan ng mga companies no, na, that, you, that you could uh, work in the future. So, pag tinignan natin yung global landscape, although hindi rin ito ganun uh, updated, but the two main uh, operators that are uh, on the open run deployment, okay, si Rakuten sa Japan, okay. So, if you're familiar with Viber, so isa sa mga products nila yung Viber, but Rakuten uh, Mobile is uh, an operator in Japan. So, kasama niya si Entity Docomo, si KDDI, okay, sa Japan. And the other uh, operator is located sa US. So, sa ang pangalan nila is DISH Network. So, they are operating an open run na. And the other um, operators or companies uh, are ongoing mga trials no, and testings. Yan. So, kasama rin Pilipinas. So, recently nagkaroon ng testing si Smart dito sa Pilipinas ng open run and yung run intelligent control nila. Okay, you, can, you can read more about it sa kanilang website. Okay? So, when we talk about open run in Asia, so, ito yung mga movements na nakikita natin sa Asia. So, nandiyan si Entity Docomo. Okay? So, meron silang tinatawag na uh, OREX. Um, sila Rakuten, sila KDDI, nandiyan. Um, uh, meron din sa Indonesia, sa Malaysia. Yan. So, maraming ano, maraming mga movements na no, sa open run. So, meaning, if we also jump in dito sa open run, uh, we're not alone. No? So, maraming, maraming yung kasama. No? So, it's not just a hype. So, meaning it's uh, happening uh, in Asia and around the world. Okay? So, ayan yung ating uh, uh, discussion. No? So, I think may kili lang. Eh, no? So, ito yung mga key learning points natin just to summarize before we end the session. So, in wireless telecommunication system, meron tayong three main parts as easy as one, two, three. User terminals, RAN, and the core. And then meron tayong mga various frequencies uh, from low to high frequencies. Okay? And then we can, uh, the radio access network can be deployed using different structure configurations. And then the 5G is the fifth generation of mobile communications na tawag ka is NR. Meron tayong tatlong use cases, the EMBB, MMTC, and the URLLC. And for the Philippines, marami tayong pwedeng pag-leverage yan ng RAN, 5G and open RAN technologies for different uh, sectors, enhancing yung connectivity and efficiency in introducing these innovative services. Okay? And open RAN means open radio access network. And open RAN deployment, testing, and trials are currently happening at a significant pace both globally and in Asia. Okay? Okay?